This programme is brought to you by Shield Total Insurance, the specialists in motorhome and campervan insurance. We tested. Oh, what was that? And this is my motorhome, the beast. We listened. We challenged. No, no, that's fine. We experienced. We travelled. We had fun. We are Motorhome TV. Motorhome TV is brought to you by real enthusiasts, including Peter Vaughan. For the last 18 years, Peter has been editor of What Motorhome magazine and is now also road test editor of MMM, Britain's best-selling motorhome magazine, and is now such a respected expert in the motorhome world that manufacturers ask him to review their prototypes to help identify any potential problems before putting them in the showrooms. Kids are going to love this one. So many motorhomes are about retired couples. Which is all well and good, but this one's for the whole family to enjoy. It's the Benimar Tesoro 413. can't beat a bunk bed layout when it comes to family motorhoming and these beds at the back are each around 2.1 meters long so if you've got lanky teenagers no problem and they're up to about 0.8 of a meter wide. Each bed has enough headroom, it's got its own reading light, its own USB port and an opening window so you're all right all season round and because the beds are at the back if mum and dad are still having a drink or two up front then the kids are in their own private space at the back. And each bed even has its own privacy curtain. Of course, the kitchen needs to be family friendly too. And it is, you've got an oven, so you can do pizza. You've got a microwave for those instant ready meals when the kids are starving. And a giant fridge freezer for all mum and dad's beer and wine. And of course, all those essential tins of beans, well, you can stock more than the average branch of Sainsbury's in those two pullouts. Storage too. Nice big wardrobe for mum and dad's clothes and all the folded stuff where you've got one, two, three drawers for those. A separate shower is pretty much essential if you've got sand covered kids after a day on the beach and this one's a really good size. Even better, you've got 120 litres of fresh water in an inboard location, so you won't have to worry about that freezing up in the winter. Mum and Dad will be relieved that at the end of the day, they don't have to make the lounge into a bed. Their bed just comes powering down from the ceiling. And then all you need to do is add the ladder. The bed's 1.88 metres long, 1.4 metres wide at the head end, and it doesn't block the door. This is a practical dining space for the family because the table extends. There's also a neat little wine rack over by the door and a great big sunroof above reading lights. It's all pretty well equipped. And that is a theme throughout this van. There is quite a high level of specification including things like cruise control and cab air conditioning and the 170 bhp ford engine this van drives really really well and with it being only 6.4 meters long it's not off-putting if this is your first motorhome and if this is your first van you're a very lucky family
Motorhoming appeals to people from all walks of life, and many use their motorhome to enable them to enjoy other hobbies, such as Steve Walker and his wife Christine, who are passionate cyclists. My name is Steve Walker. I was born in Yorkshire. I worked for 44 years for the Ordnance Survey. I married Christine in 1974. We've been cycling more or less ever since we met. We'd like to go over to watch the Tour de France or some of the races in Belgium because we're very keen cyclists. Love to watch the continental racing. Next week we're going up to the Tour de Yorkshire. The middle of the next month we are going down to the New Forest, which is another cycling event. We do a lot of time trials, so we've been to many events, really sort of from north end of Yorkshire all the way down to Hampshire, and very many places in between. Time trialling is a thing I've been doing for ever, and uh, it just means that with a tandem we can enjoy the racing ourselves together. I started cycling when I was at school, but uh, motorhome, the first one came along in 1981, just after our son was born. We'd had BWs in the past where we'd been able to squeeze a tandem in in between the front seats and the back seat. And when we sold that, which was a good 10, 15 years ago, uh, we decided that if ever we did get another van, it would have space in the back and a bit more space for us to lounge around. That was the result of us receiving a legacy. So we suddenly had the money and it made sense to get the best we could afford. Shop around. And it wasn't until we'd gone back to Loudham's where the guy said to us, this one's just come in from a show and it's got a hatchback. Would you like to look at it? So it fitted our shopping bill. A lot easier to drive because despite its size, it's not affected by the winds. Yeah, we've got more space. We've got the shower, we've got fixed kitchen and we've got a lot more storage. Uh, the freedom to choose where to go. Uh, we can pitch up in a pub car park or a big campsite or a farmer's, farmer's field or we can do a bit of free camping. We can please ourselves where we park. We don't have to rely on the village hall car park. If you're new to the motorhome hobby, it can be daunting driving onto a campsite when you've no idea what you're supposed to do. How exactly do you level a motorhome or hook up the electric? Well, here we take the mystery out of it all with these campsite challenges. Good morning and welcome back to Woodland Waters in Ancaster for another tech challenge. How are you guys, you all right? How do you think you got on last week? Good, yeah, it's fun. Good, you're always full of confidence, Green. I like to <laughs> hear Mr. Optimist. it. I like to hear it. Oranges, a little bit more difficult last week. How did you find it? I enjoyed last week. I thought we gave a good performance of ourselves. So guys, the challenge last week was a little bit more challenging and this week is no different. It's relatively straightforward. We want you to set up a driveway awning. All you've got to do is read the instructions and away you go. Let's find out how you do it.
So guys, it's relatively straightforward this week, but how are you feeling about it? We're improving every week, so third week. We can see that. And have you, have you got the bug for the world of motorhomes here? I, I certainly have. Um, I think one needs convincing. I've just got a fly in my ear, sorry. <laughs> and that literally did go in my ear. <laughs> You find the instructions. Whole bag of pegs and a mallet. Uh, instructions in washing your tent. Okay, here when pitching. Oh, torn that. Fold it out, you think? So, right, which way is. This is the bottom, isn't it? The yeah, so it needs to be turned, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> See where, roughly where it, it's. Uh, Twisted. Right. There we go. Right, there we go. Yeah? Yeah. Cool. So this looks like, is this like the door? Door? Is that the door? Is that the door? Is that the door? Where's that pump? There, in that bag. So we've got the, uh, that door shape, and there's a side door there, so that, I've got to find that one, the main window on it. This bit, isn't it? Do you think so? Yeah. I think there's two. There's, there's two bars, there's two. so I think they go. That's a bit that goes against the, uh, the motorhome. Yeah. Let's get the uh, get it pumped up, shall we? Get the rough shape out. Uh, we might have a leak. Get a little bit. So, I'm going to find the air beam. And twist, yep. Here comes the fun bit. Here's the Does it feel hard enough? <laughs> Stand this bit up against the motorhome? Huh? Yep, I'd say so. Is that right? If we uh, get this up there, Pull this uh, the bottom edge. Watch your nails. And put a peg in peg each, in side. each side. If I only read the instructions, is that as fast forward as it? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can't get out now. Uh, do, you want, do you want me to? Yeah, if I hold. <laughs> Charles. Throw one over to you. <laughs> Across the other side. Okay, yep. Yeah. Beginner's look is running out quick. <laughs> uh, yep. You ready? <laughs> Terrible throw. Sorry. Okay. That's about right. Good. That's looking good. Uh, Doing so well first time. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Just sit there. And it's got these inner tensioning straps here, you see. Yep. So if you want to grab that one. Uh, hold that, hold that. You're not, it's, you've knotted it. Yeah, I know, but it's the wind that keeps blowing it over the van. That's <laughs> not going to work. So I'm going to get that in you. Go on. <laughs> so that, that's it. Can you lift it? No. Pull it up. You're going to have to throw it again. Oh, come on. The arm's not that big. But that's it, that's that's it, bar, you know. Uh... Yeah, the rope came the other side of the aerial, it should have gone oh, right, the other okay. side, I couldn't move it. Right, there we go. Oof. Right, we like to give it like a proper pull. Coming up after the break, we reveal whether the novices will beat the experienced motorhomers again in this week's campsite challenge. We get Geneve to test a folding electric bike to see if it really is perfect for a motorhomer and we look to what the future has in store for the VW campervan. This programme is brought to you by Shield Total Insurance, the specialists in motorhome and campervan insurance.
shows have been organising the largest outdoor motorhome and campervan shows in the UK for 30 years. With nine locations to choose from, four nights of live entertainment with various themes and headline acts, a huge display of new and used vehicles to help you choose the right model for your lifestyle, a vast selection of outdoor leisure accessories and hobby essentials, but most importantly of all, something for everyone. Visit the motorhome experts at Chelston Motorhomes Wellington Somerset, a family-run business that has been delivering motorhomes for over 30 years and have built up an unrivaled reputation for quality and customer service. There's a huge choice of quality, pre-inspected new and used motorhomes, and all backed with comprehensive warranties. Come along and view our stock at leisure in relaxed surroundings or find us online at chelstononline.co.uk or call 01823 Double six two zero seven five. We're open seven days a week. If you're looking for motorhome or campervan insurance, then look no further than Shields Total Insurance, the motorhome specialists. We hold the FIFO Platinum Trusted Service Award for consistently delivering excellence, so you can get all of this. So call us today on 0800 980 7021 or go to shieldtotalinsurance.co.uk forward slash TV to get a quote. Shield Total Insurance. Whatever your motorhome takes you, we've got you covered. So, why is MMM Britain's best-selling motorhome magazine? Perhaps because it's been the market leader for 54 years. Maybe because it covers everything a motorhome owner needs to know or because it is written by motorhome experts. And it provides great, inspirational travel ideas and has the most in-depth road tests of the latest models. And it answers all your technical queries, as well as keeping you in touch with everything that's going on in the world of motorhomes. No, actually, it's all of these things and more. MMM, Britain's best-selling motorhome magazine. Get your issue of MMM now at pocketmags.com forward slash MMM or in the shops. This program is brought to you by Shield Total Insurance, the specialists in motorhome and campervan insurance. So there we go, guys. The green team have completed their next challenge and the awning is up, um, which is good. How did you find that, guys? It was uh, okay, yeah, it was yeah. a bit quicker than we thought, but right. it's, you know, a little bit more complicated than we thought as well. Yeah. Right. Well, it looks okay, actually. It looks pretty good. Let's see if, how sturdy it is. Yeah, not bad. You've left some guide ropes out, but um, that's okay. The wind's not going not gonna to blow it away at the minute, but yeah, it looks pretty good. So not a bad, not a bad effort at all. It took you 15 minutes, just over 15 minutes. But I think the real test is, can we drive the van away while it still stands? Should we give that a go? Yeah. So guys, if you unpeg it, I'll jump in the front, you throw the ropes over, and I'll see if I can drive away. Okay. Here's the real test. Let's give it a go. Yeah. <laughs> right, it's home. Yes. 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 <laughs> Phew. Sweet relief. Thank God. So guys, challenge complete and I have to say it looks a little bit floppy from here, um, but it's all stood up, it's all where it should be. How did you find it? I think once we found the parts and the right straps and stuff, it wasn't bad at all. Yeah, I think, well actually your time is 15 seconds better than the green team, but as I mentioned before, it's not all about time. Let's see how sturdy it is. So I don't think it's quite as sturdy as the green teams, but it's not too bad. And I think it's a bit loose at the top as well. The rain might get in there, but if you unclip it, I'll see if I can drive it away. No. Oh, yeah, it's not great, is it? No. Could, uh, could do better. We've learnt a lesson, haven't we? We have. So experience wins over beginner's luck with the awning challenge. Now let's head over to see what Geneve makes of the latest folding electric bikes from Rally. Geneve is editor of Campervan magazine and comes from a family of Campervan fanatics. Truth be told, she's a bit of an adrenaline junkie with a head for heights. Who else would test a GoPro camera to its limits by jumping out of a plane with one? Or test the waterproof abilities of a pop-up tent by getting the fire brigade to turn their most powerful hose on it? Only Geneve. Hello, hello! 
so this is the uh, latest bike from Rally that's cleverly called the Stow E Way. And um, Stow E Way because it's very easy to stow away in your motorhome garage. It's a folding bike. It's quite a small one, it's packed up like this, and it's uh, really easy to put up, as I'm going to show you now. So first thing we do, there's a little button down here that says open, and we need to just open that. And the frame twists in half like that. Now, once you've got it into this position, the best thing to do is put the stand on, and then you've got somewhere to balance it. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is just put the handlebars up. So you've got this lever here. All you do is just push that back again. Handlebars lift into place. Put that like that. Clip that closed. And there you go. Now, they are adjustable. There's another lever on here. You can move them up and down if you want to. With that in place, I'm just going to close up the bike. That The open-close lever I mentioned before, just push that closed. There we go and that stops that from opening. Let's put the saddle the right way around. As you can see, I've stowed it away in reverse. Again, there's a lever down the bottom and that's height adjustable as you'd expect. The other thing we need to do is the pedals. In order to make these um, stow away easier, they fold down as you can see. Now they just simply clip up and our rally bike is ready for a test ride. It's, it's got a lithium-ion battery, so that makes it an electric bike. It has eight speeds, eight to eight gears. If you're in manual mode, you just change them using the handlebars. You've also got here on your thumb, you've got electric mode, and that just gives you that electric boost. If you want to go faster down country lanes, if you're going up hills, you just turn on your battery, press it, off you go, nice and easy. It's also got everything else you'd expect on a, on a bicycle. You've got front and back gear levers on the handlebars. You've got nice rubber handles. The lithium ion battery is also at the back as well. That's very easy to take off to charge. You could just do that when you're back at the campsite on your motorhome. Um, you just take off your battery, put it on to charge. Jobs are good. Then. What I really like about this bike is it's actually so easy to set up and put down again. It takes the whole of about two minutes. You just snap open the frame, you put on the uh, saddle, you twist around the, um, the steering wheel to where you want it to be, you snap open the pedals, and also it's got a bell. Volkswagen has always been synonymous with camper vans. VW vans were the first to be converted into homes on wheels. Now, this German manufacturer has looked into its glass ball to predict what the camper van of the future will look like. The first VW camper vans were closely related to the Beetle. They were basic, air-cooled and very, very slow. 1,100cc and 25 horsepower doesn't go very far. However, from those humble beginnings, an icon has developed. Today, the words Volkswagen and campervan are as inseparable as a gin and tonic. In the last 30 years, VW has sold over 150,000 of its California campers. But what about the future? VW has already teased us with the hint of what campervanning later in the 2020s might look like. This is the ID Buzz concept vehicle, with its retro looks harking back to those very first camper vans in the 1950s, with the very latest in battery technology. Unlike today's Volkswagen campers, which are all diesel powered, this one can be plugged into the main supply at home. In fact, it can also recharge inductively, taking half an hour to return to 80% charged. Inside, old fashioned switches and dials are gone, replaced by an augmented reality head up display in 3D and by 2025 it is anticipated that the ID pilot mode will let this VW drive itself. You'll get there quickly too. The ID Buzz is said to reach 62 miles per hour from rest in five seconds. No current production camper can get close to that. Perhaps the camper van of the future will be hogging the outside lane. Probably not, but with a 600 kilometer range, you won't be stopping at every motorway services to recharge. You might not even need to stop for a coffee if this vision of the future rides smoothly enough for you to make a brew on the M62. 
When you get to your campsite, presumably the camper van of the next decade will book itself in with the Robo Warden, which will automatically top up the water supply, empty the loo and direct you to your pitch, complete with inductive charging pad where your camper will self-park. And just as you stop, your groceries delivery will arrive and load directly into your camper's fridge without you lifting a finger. But you'll still need your walking boots and brolly when you arrive in the Lake District. Coming up next week, we meet motorhome enthusiast Pippa Cleave, test the very latest luxury A-Class motorhome from Mobile Veta, and put our two teams through another campsite challenge. is brought to you by Shield Total Insurance, the specialists in motorhome and campervan insurance.